Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Maladnik, your host. The Wonderfully Made show is about the intersection of faith and talent. We have a very special guest tonight, but first I'd like to explain that we'll be using the language of the world-renowned Talent and Personality Profile, the Clifton Strengths Assessment. So be listening for some talent themes, which are all about potential. And the idea of strengths, which are all about mature, well-developed talent. Tonight, it's my pleasure to welcome an amazing friend and colleague, Johanna Stamps. Johanna Stamps is a writer, author, and coach. She's a featured contributor on Catholic Mom and Her View from Home. She helps people find joy, hope, and inspiration in the midst of difficult times by helping them deepen their faith engage with their sense of purpose, regain their passions, and be more present to serve those they love. Johanna spent 20 years working with entrepreneurs and business leaders in the U.S. and Africa, helping to make their visions come to life. This materialized in the form of national and international literacy initiatives, mobile medical programs in Southern Africa, and groundbreaking business culture initiatives. For years, Johanna followed the opportunities for adventure, but in 2019, the adventure came to her in the form of a beautiful baby boy. Johanna is mom to baby Julian, who is already practicing to perform Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5 in 2030. (laughs) Each morning as they go out for their morning hike, they make it a habit to pray to encounter beauty and usually experience it in abundance. Mm-hmm. Johanna, it is so nice to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, yeah. I just love your whole ethos. I love your mission, helping people in so many ways. Positive doing is the name of your coaching enterprise. So tell us a little bit about your own positive doing. Well, I think for years, I was trying to figure out how I could think positively. And I realized that there's a, it's very, very difficult to change your mind patterns, but you can figure out how to do positive things, which eventually change your mind. So I figured that that was a a better route for me and it's been incredibly successful. So I figured that I'd take other people on a similar journey. Oh, so good to hear that positive doing. You know, there's so much in scripture, so much in our, our understanding of ourselves as human persons made in the image of, and likeness of God. If we really knew that in our hearts, I feel like all of our doing would be positive doing. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right? I mean, we are just riding a wave, and you're a surfer, so I can use this <laughs> image. <laughs> riding this God wave of grace and beauty and mercy. So why aren't we all lit up all the time? <laughs> and I think I tend to use that surfing metaphor so much. And um, oftentimes we kind of forget when we're getting that wave that it actually comes up under us. You know, it's not like we're just paddling into it, that it actually, it's the timing, it actually comes up and it, and it lifts us and pushes us forward. And so I think that's probably like, whenever I'm riding waves, that's the part of me that's just lighting up. So it's a lot of fun. Ooh, that's such a beautiful image. I love the image of surfing too. I actually, in my own kind of formation of my practice had in in mind that image of a surfer because when as you know as a coach you're really in the moment with someone and you're deeply listening you're kind of riding the wave of what's coming up for them you're inviting the holy spirit and there's really this sense that you're being skillful and you're guiding but at the same time there's something that you are being propelled by and drawn Mm -hmm. sort of into the shore of I guess we could go on and on with this metaphor, but (laughs) that place of authentic connection with the person you're coaching, right? Um, Yeah. yeah. There's so many amazing ways that we can go with it. I think even going into the back line, like that there's so many waves that are coming towards you. And when you're getting ready to start with a client, often they have to dive below the waves to get to that place where they could actually come back to the shore. It's like, oh, we could go on and on. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It just takes me out to the, the, the wilds of the ocean. I was raised as a sailor. And so that's my 
big connection with the sea. Oh. Uh, yeah, our, our little military family always managed, my dad always managed to have some secondhand little sailboat or something for us oh. to oh, wonderful. You know, cram everyone into and go on adventures. But let's talk about your your mission, Johanna. It's, it's a mission that comes from such a deep place in you, and it's part of your strength. And we're going to talk quite a bit about strength and talent today. But step us into what really drives your work. Well, I think now it's been such a process of um, uncovering and excavating and getting to the bottom of, of what I really am and who I really am. I think there was a lot that was in the way. There was a lot of expectations on me as I was um, living my life and especially overseas. And so it's really been that process of excavation that's gotten me to the point where I said, no, I actually am this person. I am wonderfully made. Um, and this is who I am. And getting to the point where I feel like I can maybe shout it from the rooftops a little bit more and just be excited about it. Um, and so I think right now, a lot of this is about um, really understanding that I am joyful, I am positive, <laughs> and it might be something that the world needs. And I, I have a tendency of going into places that um, could potentially be dark places or places of crisis um, and bringing joy and light into those situations. And so I think that's, um, that's where I am right now. That's what I'm uncovering. And I'm figuring out more and more ways of doing that in the world. Mm, yeah. And I love that you brought up darkness because we all struggle with it. We all have to draw out meaning and, and find a place to live that is a place of positive doing in spite of incredible suffering. And that's something that you know a lot about. Yeah. And I think, I mean, just in the past week, I've been speaking with friends that um, are losing co-workers, two women that are um, having some difficulties with their fathers, um, a cousin of mine that's passing away. And for some reason, these are areas that um, I don't like to walk into them, but they're, they're like gifts to be in that space and to really speak light and truth um, and love and beauty into the lives of people that are facing those situations. Um, so it's, it's actually been such an interesting um, discovery to see how I can use that strength and that part of myself um, in those places, places that other people are facing. Mm, yeah. And you have a lot of confidence in those places because you have a lot of life experience that has honed that courageous sense of being grounded in some core values that really inform everything you do. Say a little bit about those values. They're so beautiful in you. <laughs> Well, we were joking about them a little bit in our back and forth before the show today. And I think what was interesting is that I, when I look back at it, because I mean, uh, in essence, where what I came to after years of really trying to understand um, the values and, you know, picking from those 50 top values, um, I had joy, beauty and adventure were the ones that kept coming to the top. And I remember the first time when, when I was like, OK, this is it. And I looked at them and I was like, well, where's integrity and honor? And, <laughs> you know, those things that really have value. I, what am I? I must be so superficial to just be joy and beauty and adventure. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> because you know I, I wanted to be somebody else you know I wanted to be somebody that was different um and I'm not that is the person that I am and I'm kind of glad that I didn't try on other values just for the sake of trying them on that I kept going forward with them and understanding deeply that something about those has truth um and I wanted to understand more about that but I think in the process of trying to understand more about that, I was looking at ways that I wasn't and looking at ways that I was deficient. And so that's, I think, where my values journey kind of came to a halt. That I fell off the board, <laughs> if we're going back to the surfing metaphor. <laughs> and I needed to get back on with something else that was going to propel me forward. And I think strengths was a big part of that. Mm, yeah. So, so. Prior to uh, delving into the Clifton Strengths Assessment and really naming your talents and kind of uh, starting to pull off the layers and really own them and, and aim them into your life, what was your understanding of your talents and how they helped you to succeed? I knew there were some things that were there. I knew that there was 
was a little bit about empathy. Um, I always had a joy of connecting other people. I have a joke. It's not really a joke. It's kind of a sad story, but I had a mentor that took me aside one day and he said, you know, you're really good at connecting other people. One day you should probably figure out how to connect people to yourself. (laughs) I was like, wow, that's bold. Okay. But I, I loved him as a mentor. So I just, I took it on and I said, you know, one day maybe I'll figure that out. Um, And I think from the belief side, I mean, it's something that has always been there for years and years when I was in New York, I was trying deeply to understand how faith and work came together. And so, and it was, at some point, it was kind of like an obsession (laughs) that I was trying to figure that out. And so it was, it's been interesting to see in the past, and especially now looking back and saying, ooh, it was weird, but I stood up in front of that board meeting and I could understand what everybody was thinking just by looking at their eyes. Or when I took a New York Times assessment, it said it gave you 10 pictures of people's eyes and you needed to know what they were saying or like what they were thinking. And I got 100% on that. And I was like, oh, that's strange. I have some sort of a talent there. And so that's been funny to go back and say, okay, there was something that was happening. And now it's not just a question of understanding those things. It's more, it's what do I do with them? And how can I take that to the next level? Mm, yeah, yeah. So um, you drew out some uh, some of these empathy and connectedness and belief. Um, when when you look at these, what jumps out at you as something that you've kind of uncovered and reframed for yourself with the help of this understanding of talent, like something that now is present to you in a, in a in a way that it was not before. Um, I think a lot of it is around the strategic side. Um, I mean, gosh, I probably have something to say about every single one, but I think that was the first one that I looked at. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, please do say something about every single one, because I think it's really important for people to hear. um, You are a really successful person with a lot of self-knowledge and a lot of, you know, courage, incredible adventures, and, and really putting yourself in situations of incredible challenge and excitement. And, and so you knew something about your talents, you were self-aware, but now with this new awareness, so after all of that achievement and, and growth, now what? What's coming clearer to you through this work? So I think it's a big part of it is having looked at those things as being self-deprecating. Like I was, when I looked at strategic, I would say, oh, you know, I'm really good at figuring figuring out what some of the ways are that we can make this work. But then I would always second guess myself. So Mm. I would kind of walk into it and then step back. And I think that's where that's like with strategic, I think that's one of the areas where I've realized, okay, so this is the part where what I can bring into the situation, or I think developer might be another, another really good example of it that I didn't understand when I was in businesses and I wanted to see change overall, why I kept getting frustrated when I couldn't actually get to a place of change throughout the whole business. And then now realizing that I need to be able to see that change on a one-on-one basis, that makes so much more sense that I'll probably never be satisfied by seeing a huge amount of change or wanting to see a huge amount of change in a business, especially around culture, which anybody who's worked in culture and businesses knows that that is very hard work. That once you get into that place and then once you see that that change really isn't going to to happen, at least it's not going to happen very quickly, um, that there's probably the the better potential is working one-on-one with an individual. Mm, Yeah. And so let's just, I'm going to just do a quick little summary, and then I'd love for you to comment on each of these. So empathy for those of you just having your first exposure to Clifton Clifton Strengths. People with high empathy, it's not just that they sense your feelings. That's a superpower for them, definitely. But they're also really good at embracing emotional uh, content in the moment. They can really receive and, and give a lot of emotional intelligence. In other words, they sense other people. They're really good at expressing emotional language. In other words, they can tell you how they feel with a lot of clarity, and they can help you to figure out how you feel too. They're very good at, at igniting that same sensitivity in others. And so the person with empathy is often very, well, it's a relational theme. The blue themes are relational, 
So she's highly relational. That connectedness piece too is connecting with people deeply, but also that sense of the wider family of being interconnected as a whole, noticing that parts become wholes. And also that ability, which she has in, on her beautiful morning walks with her son, that ability to draw out meaning and to notice beauty and to draw from everything and make meaning. And so you can see how those two things combine in, in terms of the relational piece. She's, there's a lot of depth there. And her developer gets really excited. I mean, when you are operating in your national natural talent themes, you're actually getting an endorphin kind of a bath in your brain. It's really good for your brain when you stand in your natural talents. So when she was struggling to cause developmental change on a wider in a wider sense, that was a natural drive place there in her by God, but she's found that in that relational one-on-one, -on -one, that's where it really comes to life. The strategic, really rapid mental processing, highly creative options, decisive. There's a lot of real strength there. And that belief is about really strong, unchanging, kind of mm -hmm. indestructible core values. And so the fact that, that you kept coming back, Johanna, to beauty, joy, and adventure, and we're not talking about cosmetics here. We're talking about beauty, the place where God lives. So this is something that isn't at all superficial for you. Mm. Yeah. And it's funny that I worked for a beauty industry in, in South Africa for about three years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know the difference. I know the difference. And it's, yeah. it's also one of the things that was coming up while you were, while you were speaking. I, the first manuscript that I ever wrote was about a relationship that I had with an atheist boyfriend. Uh -huh. And it was 52 things I learned about my faith from my atheist boyfriend. Wow. So even, even in that relationship, I was saying, okay, so what are the things that I'm learning about the truths in my life, my belief structure through this relationship with somebody who has a completely different belief structure? Ooh, I love that. Because I've mm. heard some really savvy apologists say that atheism is a religion because you have to take so many leaps of faith to ignore, you know, the designer and the deeper meaning and all of that, all the intangibles. But for you as a young woman, drawing out so much meaning, I mean, I'm dying to read that. <laughs> I need I to go really back am. and read it myself. It's been years. <laughs> I have the manuscript somewhere. I have to go back and read it before I show it to anybody else. <laughs> Repurpose. <laughs> repurpose evergreen material <laughs> yes exactly all you content creators out there are going speak your language <laughs> all right all right so so say a little bit more about you know i was just kind of spouting off about your top five what else would you like to share about how these talents help you and how they cause you struggle um, well, I, was, I, I mean, when you were speaking about my son, I think that's probably my, my best version of developer right now and belief. I mean, it's amazing how we get the opportunity to really take all of our strengths into our relationship with our children. Um, and because I only have one, I don't know how that changes when you have multiple children. Um, but I do feel like we're created so, so specially for the children that come into our life, whether adopted or, or naturally. Um, and it's just, it's fascinating to me to really see how all of these things have really come to life over the past two years with him, that, you know, that all of a sudden beauty isn't something that I cringe away from, um, that belief is something that is, has been reignited because I get to pass it on in a different way. I mean, 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago, I get to hold his little face in my hands and say to him, Julian, do you know that you are loved and you're loved by all of us, but you're especially loved by God and God made you so unique and so beautiful. And my only job is to watch you develop, to help you develop into the person that God created you to be. Like, that's amazing that I get to say that on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. You know, I wish that I could do that. And I guess I can for my clients. I can't really hold their, their face in my hand. Um, but I think that's probably, that's probably where I will end up being with my coaching practice. It's just reminding people how loved they actually are. Because I don't know about you, but I hear it from all of my priestly friends that that's what people are asking for in the con confessional more than anything else. That they don't believe that they're loved and they need to be reminded of that love. Mm, and amen. yeah, and just to be reminded of how unique they are. And I mean, what a gift you have to be able to do that in the world right now. 
Mm, I, what I'm discovering, Johanna, thank you for touching on that. I, that's such a powerful place for me right now because so many of my clients and students, because I do webinars and, and things like that, is that they come into coaching either consciously or unconsciously feeling like there's a low bar on their happiness that was set by God. Mm. That they were perhaps carelessly made, not wonderfully made. Mm. They may not put it that way, but they feel it. We know we're unique and unrepeatable. The catechism tells us that. We know Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I am wonderfully made, Lord, wonderful are all your works. We know St. Paul says that every part of the body is unique and necessary to the whole. But do we really know it in our hearts? And one of the things that has really helped people is to know their own beautiful, unique design. And then they encounter the designer in a new way. Here's a God who pours himself wholeheartedly into creating each one of us. Because God, there's nothing careless or unintentional about God. He's 100%. And so these little talent themes we have here, which can be so incredibly rich and revealing and empowering, are just a tiny flicker, a fragment of how wonderfully made you are. And just like the image of the ocean is an image of God's divine mercy, that mm -hmm. is just a tiny inkling of the reality of it. And the same is true of your unique and unrepeatable soul. And so this tool, I think, is incredible because it's nuanced. It gives us so much to, to look through, uh, through the eyes of faith. Mm. And, and Johanna, your faith is incredible. Um, in what ways, and I'm, you know, maybe throwing you a little curveball, but talk a little bit about how your spiritual life is responsive to this new encounter with God in your talent awareness. Oh gosh, it changes every day. <laughs> but today, it feels like there's a huge amount of confidence that's coming. Um, and I, what I just had so much earlier today was, I have all these things that I can see that God is doing with my strengths. And what was coming to me was, can you stop thinking about it and just doing it? Like, just, just live in it. Like, stop overthinking again <laughs> at the end of my life. <laughs> Stop, just, just bask in it and just walk forward and just to it. Mm. And it was, I think that for me is one of the most amazing things that's coming out of strengths is that it's saying, okay, you can stop overthinking who you are. You can stop feeling bad about, you know, the way that the world has beat you down over the years. Um, and you can actually just step up. You can straighten up your spine a little bit and walk forward knowing that God has made you in this way. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm on this amazing Lenten journey, as you know, for <laughs> a Marian consecration. So I'm like on a huge, amazing roller coaster right now. So I could go in lots of different directions with that, but I think I'll leave it at that. Oh, well, that's a fun little side trip to take because the first time I did the Marian consecration using uh, the 33 days to morning glory, excuse me, <clears throat> um, all of a sudden all, there were a couple of relationships in my life with women that were wounded. And they suddenly opened up like flowers blooming. Like it was incredible. Like people that were not even in my vicinity reaching out to me with love in a new way, in a way that was so remarkable that at first I didn't believe it. And so mm. I really attributed that to Our Lady. And when I had my conversion in 1992, yeah, I've been around a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was Our Lady's fingerprints all over everything. She drew me mm. back to Christ when I was very bitter. So Our Mother, I mean, if if everything was made through Christ, like, the, you know, John chapter one says all that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and that nothing was made that was not made through him. And so here's her son, her beloved son, through whom we are made. Just think of her tenderness for the way mm. he made us. Oof. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sink in. What, yeah. what is your mother's heart saying right now? <laughs> um, my mother's heart is saying that I'm glad I've been a Catholic for these past five years. <laughs> so <laughs> mm -hmm. my conversion wasn't hasn't been that long ago. And when I was speaking about the faith and work side, it was because I was I was running around um, and really like I had amazing relationships within the Protestant Church, but there was always something missing. And so for me, having that belief side of my strength, 
I mean, the beauty, the joy, the depth of, of faith that I've found in Catholicism is incredible. Like I, I would have never been able to, to really truly understand um, the extent of that strength, I think, um, had I not walked into my, uh, my new faith. Mm, yeah. And for somebody too, that was really inquisitive, that had that ability to draw meaning in, in a relationship with an atheist or to find your way into the Catholic church after years <laughs> of uh, being uh, Protestant, I just have to, I just, that seeker in you, that, that person who um, is always in motion, even though you did talk about, you know, needing to rest your mind. You have that highly strategic, fast-moving mind, right? So it can be hard to settle it and just be and just step forward. Um, but there's also that seeker in you that God wove into your being mm. uh, that is always The adventure. Growing. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, in the interior adventures as well as the exterior ones. I think it goes back to the empathetic side of things, that that empathy and belief, um, there's something that's really beautiful about that combination. And so I knew that I could be empathetic and loving in a relationship with an atheist. Um, I mean, the, the the kind of novel story is that my dad, before I went off to college, said, I don't want you to go to church anymore. I want you to study every other religion. And then let's see what happens. But I have faith that you're going to come back to the church. And I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. So, you know, I went off and did exactly what he said. He still doesn't remember saying that. Huh? But I was empathetically studying other religions and saying, what can I glean from this? I, I gleaned a very amazing meditative practice from, from Buddhism. Um, you know, I, I gleaned some really incredible history from Judaism and some practices there. Um, and just like, just incredible things. But what a way to be able to be in the world and to be able to, to find that sort of joy with open eyes and open, an open heart and, and open arms really for, I mean, goodness, we're talking about this the week that the Pope goes to Iraq. You know, what a brilliant thing. Sorry, I just ruined your evergreen video. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. You know, I don't really care about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. I mean, I, you know, all of my lights were going off when I was seeing that. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. I wonder what conversations they were having. Because that's what it is. I mean, to empathetically walk into all these things is a joy. It's so much fun. And I'm just, I mean, it's a blessing to be able to be in the world in this way. Mm, yeah, amen. And uh, there's always a way that our, our strengths can be misunderstood, too. You know, Gallup calls them, and Gallup owns the Clifton Strengths Finder. Um, Gallup calls them barrier labels or counterfeits. Or take a look at your top five there and think about is there a time when you, either you or people around you or both misunderstood one of your talents and made it a negative label? Um, wow. I mean, I could go back to the belief things really, mm -hmm. really easily because <laughs> that thing keeps coming up. I think that, um, gosh, for years I was trying to figure out with connectors and connectedness. Um, a lot of people kept thinking that I was connecting other people for, to, to have some sort of a benefit for myself, you know, like kind of doing it for, um, for, my own glory, which I think is just, I think that can also be taken um, out of context. Um, yeah, but the belief and the, and even the developer side, I think my ex, most of my ex-boyfriends can probably attest to the fact that uh, at some point they were saying, hmm, am I a project? <laughs> <laughs> right. And developer often gets accused of wasting time on lost causes because when you're standing in your natural talents, you're getting that wonderful endorphin payback in your brain. So helping that person even to make little micro shifts of growth is rewarding for you. So you might hang in there a long time with somebody who's really not getting out of the gate. <laughs> It's true. And I, I like to think that I left my ex-boyfriends and, um, and now I, my, I guess, soon to be ex-husband, who knows, um, better <laughs> off than, uh, than I found them. So I think that's mm. probably one of the benefits from it. 
Yeah, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. And the belief thing, too, is a funny one because you started to laugh about that. Many people who have belief, and I have it high, too, because they have strong core values, they get misunderstood as just being stubborn or rigid. And what they really are is I liken it to having legs that go down deep into the earth. There are just certain core values that you can't knock us back from. We might go through periods of confusion, not understanding our own core values, being out of alignment with our values and being very unhappy. But once we discover them, you can't take them away. They're there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, again, that goes back to the, that mix of, of empathy and belief for me. And I'm glad that that, that mix is there. Um, but I'm laughing a little bit inside because my my weekly reflection and inspiration for the week for my subscribers is about the my favorite advice that I ever got from a priest, which was um, not to proselytize, like not to tell people about my faith. And I just, I wrote it down kind of, you know, kind of as a joke earlier, like uh, or sometime last week. And then I realized, oh, there's actually something here because what he was really talking about was taking a step back and not just speaking with words, but leading with friendship. Mm. And so that what has developed is a, is a piece that really goes to that, um, that deep connector, that deep developer, um, all of those beautiful strengths and really lives into that in the form of friendship. Oh, yeah. And the friendship potential there is enormous because you're bringing people together. You're um, kind of seeing which people would be good for each other. That's like connectedness and developer woven together. That's the best kind of friend. That's not cold, calculating networking. That mm. is just something that comes naturally to you because you see, again, you see the beauty of it. You're like, oh, those two people should know each other, right? There's going to be a benefit there. <laughs> you like that ooh yeah that ooh it, it happens in the I mean it's funny because my neighbors think I'm hilarious because then we get into the woods one day or somebody's been walking with me and we you know I see a bunch of people along the way that I know and they're like so you're the social director for, <laughs> for the neighborhood and I'm like sorry yeah I guess so <laughs> huh. what does that look like what's your social directing uh, how did you get that label well, I, I mean, I know you love people and you and Julian talk to everyone, <laughs> which is amazing. But We uh, do, but I mean, yeah. I just, everybody has a story I, and like tomorrow we're going over to tea with a, a neighbor with a lovely sheepdog, a, a British man who's making a full tea for us tomorrow. So, you know, just mm -hmm. we're so blessed and it just happens by having conversations with people um, and, you know, day to day, just asking about how somebody is doing and and especially with the mums in the neighborhood, just seeing how we can help. And I think it's easier during the warmer months, especially during COVID. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, yeah, I can see the blessing in that and being able to, um, to play that role in people's lives and being in the neighborhood in that sense. Mm, yeah, beautiful. And you just have a nat natural inclination to do the things that you're now doing in your business, which is helping people to realize their dreams. Um, how do you begin to step somebody who feels like their dreams are impossible, they feel powerless or uh, maybe a little afraid or overwhelmed? What's the, what's the, the message underneath it all or, or the pathway in that helps someone to start to shift? Mm -hmm. um, I think speaking a lot about uh, that anything really is possible, just being in that space of joy um, and exploration. I think that's something that's natural for me is that, um, especially through the years when I was working with entrepreneurs overseas, that I think there was a connection there with me and, and business leaders because I, I get lit up when somebody gets excited about something and, and there's something that's potentially in their future. Um, I start to think about okay, so let me ask these questions. So that's my coaching hat now. It used to be, oh, and we can do this and we can do this and we can do this. Now it's, oh, so what about this? Hmm. So how, how does that work? And then being inquisitive and curious and staying with them and tracking with them. And it's amazing how all of a sudden in the course of an hour that somebody can go from, uh, you know, I'm thinking about this thing, but, you know, I've, I've never really been able to get something off the ground. And then in, in the course of an hour, getting to the place where somebody says, wow, you know, maybe this is possible. And, you know, having not coerced them to do it, that just asking questions and just tracking with them and being curious about who they are and, and 
what to potentially in their future. Mm. You have a really beautiful presence, Johanna, that allows people to dream. And your curiosity and your ability to be fully present to another person really does give them that place of safety to explore and discover themselves. Mm. And so you have so much life experience, you know a lot of what's possible. You've done a lot of what's possible. But now you can take that belief in others and the potential of others into that space of believing in them, using your belief and your developer and your empathy Mm -hmm. just so powerfully show up for them that's just so rare mm. Mm. thank you <laughs> mm. i think i needed to hear that today <laughs> yeah we all do right we all need it yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think it's it's so fun just to at this place um then realize how everything does fit together i have um this wonderful walls uh, a coach friend of ours asked me to to just to look around and pay attention to the ways that God is showing up. And so I started to create this wall of post-it notes. I'm not going to turn the camera over there because we'll totally ruin the shot. Um, <laughs> but the whole base of it is what is enduring, what has been enduring in my life. And that is just, that is so cool. It's fun to see what some of those things are and then what the experiences have been. Because I think we can go through life and whatever our beliefs are, whatever our strengths are, um, we can say, oh, well, that didn't fit. Like, what was that all about? Why did I have to do that? And yet every single one of those things that at some point I said, oh, why was that in my past? <laughs> has gotten It's gotten on the board now and I'm paying attention to it. And I'm saying there was something there and I didn't pay attention to it at the time, but I'm watching it now and I want to see what God's going to do with it in this next era. And I think that's a, a fun thing too, that it's not just looking at strengths for this for the sake of looking at strengths, it's because it fits in with every other part of your existence. That's the fun part. And so, I, I mean, it's just incredible to see how all this is taking shape. Mm, yeah. What does it give you to have that board laid out to look at? I mean, you said a little bit about it, but give us a sense of what its purpose mm. is. Um, so, well, I think one of the most amazing things is when I'm praying just to look up and say, you know, what am I praying for? Who am I praying for? And so it could be opportunities. It could be those values. It could be, I have Julian is up on my board and what's happening in his life and, and in his, wherever he's going with his belief structure or wherever he's going with his development. Um, it could be, uh, you know, what is the, what is the voice that I'm developing with, with my writing or what is being developed with my voice and writing? Um, and so it's, whatever those things are, it's every single day is a different inspiration. I think one of the coolest um, things that I did that I, it was just a kind of divine moment. I think I've never heard of anybody else do this, but I wrote down all of the, the major scripture that has been relevant in my life and enduringly re relevant to my life. And then I went through that and, you know, playing my little facilitator hat, went through and said, okay, so what are the things that are there? What are the themes that are there? And can I pull them out? And what, what is the, how does that cross over into every single other area of my life? And it was incredible to see, you know, it goes back to serving with love. It goes back to, um, to suffering and having joy and suffering and perseverance. Um, and it's just, it's fun to actually see how the word is alive in our life, whether or not we know it. Mm, I love that, to see how the word is alive in our lives. I love that your connectedness can relate to all these post-it notes on a wall <laughs> and how they interconnect and how you're drawing out meaning. And I, and I feel like you're like a figure skater honing, you know, kind of the turns and the landings by coming back to those meaningful things and continuing to, in a sense, visually touch them and continue to draw out meaning. You're, you're working that muscle. You're fine-tuning, in a sense, a kind of spiritual sight so mm. that over time, it's just getting more and more um, kind of agile and, mm. and impactful. Good word. I think that's the agile side. Like anybody who's kind of been in that, um, in that space of agile development knows that it's constant development. That it's not something that you come from point A to point B or point C and then finish at Z. You go through it as this beautiful cycle of development. 
And I think that's a, it's an amazing analogy for what's happening, what's taking shape on that board, that on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, something else can come to life, but it connects with something else and something else is being developed inside of me. And it just is this constant moving forward. Um, and I think, I don't know, I, I've been thinking a lot recently about, um, about how from a like beatitudinal level that we're constantly going through the cycle of, of serving others as well. Um, and how we make ourselves, we humble ourselves and, and serve others and lift them up and how that moves us forward. And I think that is really when my board comes to life, that suddenly I see that it's not just about me, that I'm not, it's not just a board about my existence, but it's the board about how I am influencing the lives of others by serving them in the unique ways that I'm made. Mm. That it's, that's just so intentional and brave to keep facing your life every day, looking at it, you know, showing up to it, processing it. And I know that you're doing that very prayerfully. It reminds me of the way the church uses the liturgical year. We mm. go through these kind of memories of our church history over and over again, our feast days and, and solemnities and things like that. And as we do, we're different every time. If we're growing in the spiritual life, we're experiencing, we're, we're re-experiencing those things, the Nativity and Good Friday and Easter at different points in our spiritual development. And so those touchstones that are repetitive, that may just seem like, you know, a, a thing on a wall, one of those advent calendars on a wall, it may just seem like a wheel, but in fact, it's a treasure map. And we go deeper and deeper into those places as we draw closer to God. Yeah. And I mean, I've heard on so many Lenten podcasts recently how people kind of, you know, drag their feet through Lent. And I'm like, development? What? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Yay, let's go for it. Where do leveling I start? up. <laughs> yeah, leveling up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have a ponytail and swing it back and forth. I don't know why it's like, it brings me back to being like a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, that's that. Yeah, you have a distinct positivity in you that is such a gift. Yeah. Um, start to take us out with some final thoughts about um, kind of this, this journey of becoming more aware and what that gives you. Hmm. Uh, peace, I think, is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, just, I, I think I've said it before with you, but it's just an incredible gift really to say that I don't have my laundry list of things that I'm changing about myself that you know to that I got to sit down and just pray today and hear Johanna these are the ways that that we're working together and the way that you are going to be better at doing this if you're just prayerful just walk in your life and be prayerful and I think there's such a release in that that we don't have to you know, be constantly working on our little, um, you know, hamster wheel, trying to go forward and never getting anywhere. We're just in this space of awe. And it's not me, it's God, <laughs> you know, mm. that I just get to say, oh, wow, you did this. Um, that, oh, yeah, I, I mean, I was crying earlier today just thinking about it because um, it's such a gift to be able to have this vantage point of life. Yeah. And, and like anybody who gets to, to adulthood and has had enough life experiences to have that sense of peace, of self-acceptance. And we're not talking about sweeping sin under the rug or not seeking to correct our faults or grow in virtue. Um, we had a little glitch there. That Sorry was there. Second. That was my no. side. <laughs> oh, no. I think, anyway, we had a little <laughs> not connection, which is totally fine. You know, maybe we just had a kind of like a holy lightning bolt there for a moment. Uh, <laughs> author's message. Is that you, Lord? <laughs> um, uh, at any rate, I don't, I kind of lost my train of thought, but um, it was something beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that'll do it. Uh, okay, yeah, we're not talking about, when we talk about emphasizing strength, we're truly not saying that we're ignoring where we need to work on ourselves. That's what sacramental life is for and examination of conscience. What we're really talking about here is this tendency for the enemy to get in our heads and constantly point out 
everything and twisting even what is good in our minds and causing us false shame, which is just Mm. a burden. And it Mm -hmm. weighs us down in our relationship with God. It makes us feel less loved. So you can see why false shame is a great tool of the enemy. It discourages us. It reduces our hope. It reduces our tenderness for this holy and beautiful God who poured himself into us unreservedly and made us wonderfully. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Genesis, he called everything that he made good. And so uh, I appreciate you, Johan. I appreciate the way you keep working it and that you're so growth-minded and and that you bring that uh, kind of dynamism and hope and curiosity into everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's just been a really interesting day just because I had moments of anxiety and I just realized at those moments, I have nothing to be anxious about. Yeah, And it, it was just one of those, I was like, oh, there's something really cool happening if somebody is trying to, to break into my joy at this moment and make me feel anxious for no apparent reason. Hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing to be able to step out of that and say, wow, no, God's got this. I don't, Mm. I don't have to, I don't have to, to, you know, walk into any sort of anxiety unnecessarily because that's a lie. Wow. Praise God. Pray and don't worry, St. Pio. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> it's good to be catholic and it uh, is. <laughs> it's good to be geeky and catholic i feel like you know you could just kind of like go along and like you know go to mass on sunday but it's lovely to like to actually be kind of geeky about it and say oh, i'm doing this what are you doing 100 <laughs> percent. i'm all over that <laughs> we'll talk <laughs> yeah for sure all right everybody thank you so much for spending this time with us johanna Always a joy to be with you. Uh, Your clients are very blessed. Everybody, if you want to get a hold of Johanna and talk to her about positive doing, go to positivedoingcoach.com. She's terrific. Thank you, Kent, for putting that on screen. She's got a beautiful website. Take a look. Come and download her freebie. Get to know her a little bit. She's really a jewel. She's really somebody who has done a lot in her life and loves to share it and loves to encourage you in your own adventure very authentically. So we are so blessed with Johanna Stamps. Thanks for being with us, everybody. To learn more about growing your natural talents, visit my website at wonderfullymade139.com. See you next month for another episode of Wonderfully Made. God bless you. Thank you, Lisa.